world where achievements and accolades motivate us to do more and be more, we're often left wondering, is this really it? Deep inside, you know there is more to life. You're ready to leave behind the old push your way through and claim the deeper life that's calling you. That's where we excel. We're your hosts, Stephanie Allen and Marin Oslak. And this is the Soulful Leader Podcast. Sit back and relax as we share the shortcuts we've uncovered to help you make shift happen. Welcome to the Soulful Leader Podcast. This is Stephanie, and I'm here with Marin. And had a pretty extraordinary week, you know, I'd say both inwardly and outwardly. And what I mean by that, there was a lot of really high level achievements in the outer world going on, but there was also a lot of internal churning within myself too. What I mean by that, it's, um, when we think of leading and like I said, whether you're leading a company, whether you're leading a family, whether you're leading yourself, uh, we, we, in order to lead, I think there's that concept that we have to be perfect in Mm -hmm. all areas in all areas like you know geez you know I'm really good over in this area in my life with family but I really am not so great I suck at business or you know my health is really good but my love life is a mess or you know we tend to throw everything out like you know that old saying of throw throwing the baby out with the bathwater is that we don't recognize where we are strong where we are gifted and and how we're all so uniquely designed. It's beautiful. It really is. I um, As you're talking about that, I'm reminded of something that happened. I was at a speaker showcase recently and there were 10 of us and it was a lot of, a lot of beginner speakers, right? Getting up on the stage for the first time. And I was sitting there and the woman next to me, I had already done, I was, I was done and she was about to go and she said, are you happy that it's done? And there were two levels of that for me. One of them is it did not compute. I was like, how do I answer this question? This is not a part of my reality at all. And the two levels of it for me were one of them is I am, we use a profiling system, Stephanie and I, um, and the profile that I turn out to be is I'm really good in front of people. I am meant to be on a stage. It doesn't mean that I don't get nervous. It doesn't mean that I don't have to work at it. It just is that's, that's part of, of my personality. And I have spent a lot of time in my life trying to avoid that and say, no, no, that's not me. And, and kind of shaming myself about it. And owning that gift has been a challenge for me. So the second level of that for me was that I also think about everything that I do as a process, not an end goal. So I struggled with how to answer her because it wasn't done for me. It's like that just, I I got some feedback and I'm on to, okay, I want to change this. I want to do that. And what's next? And talking about it from a leadership perspective, if I could go back, which we can't. So going forward, what I learned for myself was that in talking to somebody else who doesn't have the same gifts and strengths that I do and isn't in the same place mentally of like, okay, I'm moving on, I'm ready, I'm next, whatever, that like how I would answer that is from a much more heartfelt place. I was trying to answer it from a, from a conceptual place of like trying to make something like happy. What does that mean to me? Like, instead of literally just saying, you know what, this is, this is a gift of mine and owning that gift and yeah, being compassionate for who she was. Cause that's not, that's possibly, I don't know her profile or what her gifts and strengths are, but it may not have been hers. Right. And what we're, we're talking about is really a lot of shadow. Hmm in the way of projections or even like what you're saying is like, you know, you've hidden that gift for a long time. You've made it less than you didn't want to put your time, your energy or focus on it for whatever reason. And I think that's true of all of us. It's like, 
we've been projected onto us from society of saying you're supposed to reach a certain state of consciousness or a certain state of success or outer outer accolades or whatever it might be right and if we don't in right. education or money or whatever or whatever we even look to our children that that which we have not achieved ourselves we want our children to achieve and so we project that out onward onto other people and when we do that it creates unhappiness and but at the same time it's a great evolution and i think we look at when we graduate from high school or university or whatever have you college or whatever you know in your early 20s you think okay i'm done hey. i you know i've got the degree i've got the whatever i'm done i should be happy now and away i go and except for looking that as long as you're alive you we have this opportunity to keep evolving and that it doesn't so we need to have a different relationship with conflict or uncomfortability you know i was just talking to one of my relatives because you know, we, we just, um, went through a funeral with our family and there's been, you know, when you have Christmas or any, you know, religious holiday or even married, you know, weddings or funerals, you, everybody's best and worst comes out, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It's like, you see the best and the worst in everybody. And, and because you're stressed, it's stress. And yet it's such a, a revelation of going, we're here to grow. Conflict isn't a bad thing. Conflict allows us to actually resolve something within ourselves, it brings us an awareness to look at what we've been suppressing or hiding or ignoring. And that could be our darkness, of course, you know, it could be the stuff I don't, that I'm ashamed, this is what we call the shadow, that which I'm ashamed of. And I don't mm -hmm. want to show the world. I want to do everything I possibly can to hide that part of me. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's dark or bad. It could also mean your gifts and strengths too, that you go, geez, you know, I got kind of shamed when I was a kid because it's like, you know, don't brag too much, Stephanie. You know, other people don't have your gift. You don't want to make other people feel uncomfortable or unsafe. So you hide it. So that which you, you suppress or hide is actually termed a shadow. And then we go along our life trying to compensate for that. Overcompensate, undercompensate, tweak, twist, turn. And that actually not only hurts ourselves, it hurts those who are seeking for, for the very, the very elements that we have to bring to this world. Mm -hmm. And I would love to have a different conversation when we talk about achievement. You know, like I said, you know, I just was at a family funeral and you know, we look at the outer world of achievements and I was asked to do the eulogy because I was, I had had an opportunity to meet this person, to be with this person from a heart place where most people didn't get a chance because she, you know, this, this incredible aunt of mine that traveled the world and wrote books and had TV shows and did an extraordinary outer works for humanity and social responsibility but who knew her heart and soul? And I remember asking her deep questions, like emotional questions of like, you know, I know you were a single mom, you know, in 1959, and yet you went on and you did all these great things. Did you ever fall in love again? And my cousins were like, absolutely like appalled. Like, I can't believe you asked her that question. Why would you ask her such a personal question? And I'm like, this is my aunt. Like, don't you want to know the soul of somebody? And so, you know, as we were talking about soulful leadership, this is what we, Marin and I are standing for is the soulfulness. It, it is getting to know yourself, being vulnerable, being transparent. And I'm not just talking about, you know, the, the things we're, uh, you know, trying to hide or that are bad, quote unquote, but also our gifts and strengths too, that we hold that. What if we brought them all out? I love this because as leaders, we think that getting to know, like what I heard when you're talking is, you know, it's like, oh, we should ask more questions of the people around us. There is that level of getting to know the people around us and the inner piece of getting to know ourselves. Because if you're not comfortable getting to know yourself, you can't ask those questions. 100%, right And on. if you do, it will feel like an interrogation. 
So that's why like your cousins may not have done the amount of work that you've done on that inner level to feel comfortable being like, I really want to know from that place of like really wanting to know instead of, yeah. Cause I wanted nosy. to under exactly. I wanted to understand her process of how she was able to love herself and nurture herself through that transition. Yeah. I wasn't trying to find out information for gossip or complaining or judgment. I seriously needed to know as a role model, like she was a role model of mine. Mm-hmm. It's like, wow, I believe in so many of the things that she stood for. And yet she struggled in certain areas of her life that I too struggle. And I'm like, how did you make it through that? What did you do? What advice could you what, give me? What's your practice? What was your process? Like, I really needed to know because, and I think that's so key as leaders. It's like, I was just watching a little, uh, a, a little YouTube video on a mother bear and her baby cub. And they were walking on the crest, like on the very um, precipice of a, of a cliff, a snow covered cliff. And both of them stumbled and they went off the cliff and they kind of went down this mountainside and the mama kind of, you know, went up to the top and she got up right away. But this little baby cub, oh my gosh, it would get, it would, it would get almost to the top and then it would fall back down. And you think, oh my God, it's going to die. Like, when is it going to give up? And it, I bet you it was 10 times or more. And I was losing hope in watching this video and please tell me this has got a happy ending because like, I can't, I don't think I can really handle this cub dying. Right. <laughs> And I just kept watching the tenacity and how it was trying to get over and going into her footsteps to get up. And I'm like, this is a, this is a leadership. Like she didn't rescue. She didn't go down. She stood and she watched and she literally held space for her baby. Hmm. She didn't. And I'm like, wow, there's a leadership role model right there. And so I'm coming back to my aunt of like, I was asking her questions because she was going, she had gone through something that I was currently going through and I wanted, I wanted help. I needed help. A role model in whose footsteps you could walk. Exactly. Exactly. If it turned out to be like that, right? So even asking that you don't know until you ask the question. And I love what you said too, though, if I wasn't willing to ask the deep questions of myself, there would be no space for me to ask that same question to those who actually could give me an answer. Right. And that's what I noticed for myself. I, I had the, the reaction at the speaker thing of like, that's, and I, I, I had one layer of insight at that time of, well, that's because I I don't think of this as an ending. And then the more I thought about it and something that you actually said to me, Stephanie, at the time you, you looked at me and you're like, you're such a star. <laughs> and that's the name of the, the profile that, that I happen to be. And I had dismissed it because that's part of like that. There is that shame of like, no, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. That has nothing to do with it. And I've been sitting with it for the last week and realizing that has a lot to do with it. And it is time that I own my gifts. And so I'm opening that side of myself and I have to have that conversation inside of me. I have to do that work inside of me in order to own something like what you said to me of you're such a star and saying, yeah, you know what I am. And that doesn't mean that somebody else, the woman next to me shouldn't be if she's not right, it's not a judgment. And I took it as a judgment and there was shame around it. And so instead saying, yeah, and it's time I really step into that because I've been in front of people for the last 30 years and not owning it yet. How do you do mm-hmm. that? That's been, that's been a quite an interesting journey, right? <laughs> and what would exactly. it look like for me to actually own that and say, oh, that might be one of the things that I'm here to do hmm, quite likely, right? <laughs> And, and, you know, this is why we also need each other because it just like any sports team, you know, you don't just stack a team with all the same position. Mm-hmm. You, you have to diversify and yet unify at the same time. You're both diver- diverse with different skills and, and visions and sets. And you're also unified to go to work together, to co-create together. Mm-hmm. And I look at that and it's like when we think of leadership, whether, like I said, whether you are a parent, you know, leading children, like the bear, the mama bear with the the baby bear, or you're a leader of a company with a team, 
or you're a leader of yourself in your We're family like or us, whatever, in right? A partnership. French, friendships, partnerships, marriages. It's like, what would it be like to co-create and have that diversity of two individuals or a dozen individuals or however many people and saying, you know, what wants to happen instead of trying to control and manipulate instead of the, what we think of as traditional leadership of top down, I tell you, you do. Right. That there was space, but that would require that one has to be able to look within one's own self there and lead oneself with love and kindness and space. Right. And I, and, and acknowledging, I acknowledging the layers and the, you know, the challenges inside of ourselves so that then we can acknowledge the people around us and see the gifts in the people around us and the strengths in the people around us and holding space for them to follow footsteps that they see that not, or may not be mine. Cause you know, as, as a leader of my, um, my studio team, I had a wonderful young woman who worked with me and she and I have very different views on how things could work. And so she would, if I had, if I had said, no, it has to be done my way, it would have limited, she would have followed my footsteps, but that's not her path. And so one of the things that I did with her was like, you know what, you're brilliant with that. What do you think? And I would let her kind of like the, the mama bear, right? I would let her experiment with it. And she'd come back and she'd be like, that didn't work okay, let's brainstorm. What, what are some other things that might work? And then she'd go try it, you know, very much like the mama bear of like, you know, 10 or 12 times of that didn't work until she found what worked for her and yeah. encouraging her to find role models in, in her space of people who think more like she does or are more of her profile. Yeah. Because sometimes also the other can be true too. You find somebody who has a different idea than you and all of a sudden you allow them that space to go and do it. You trust them. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously we're giving parameters too. It's like, you, maybe you're saying, you know, okay, you, you have this budget or you have this timeline or whatever. And can you do that within that? I mean, sometimes you do have to have that. Otherwise they can just go to town, <laughs> but you know, all of a sudden you might realize that this person sees it totally different than you and actually does it better than you. Absolutely. More skillfully, more artfully, more beautifully. I heard a good example about a beach ball. Um, I think this is Ken Wilber example who does a spiral dynamics and an amazing information about states and consciousness. But he said, you imagine you're sitting with a child and you have a beach ball and you know, those beach balls that have all the different colors on them, like, you know, green and yellow and white, they're all in different little things. He said, and you're spinning the beach ball, you're spinning the beach ball and you're spinning the beach ball. And then you stop the beach ball and what's in front of you might be green. And what, what's in front of the child is red. And you say to the child, what color do you see? And the child says red. And they said, now, you know, what color do I see? The child will actually say red because it can't see from my point of view. And this is what happens when we're in a state of like, can I be open to all different types of view that perhaps all of them are right? We're like seeing it at a different stage. As we evolve consciously, then we go, oh, well, wait a minute. No, that, that's a no brainer. You know, there's all kinds of colors on this beach ball and what you're seeing is totally different than what I'm seeing. But now if we took that into relationship and we took that into business right. and we took that into, it's like, what would it be like to see from their eyes? There's more compassion. There's more curiosity. There's more wonder to be able to transcend it and include it in our lives and to co-create, which I love that word. It's like, what if there was even another way that transcends both rather than me being right and you being wrong, Marin? or the other way around. It's like, what if there's something else that wants to happen that we can both move to a new state and station yeah, and evolve together? Holding that possibility. And I love that beach ball example because we all can relate to it and, and consciously like, you know, up in our, our cognitive, we're like, oh yeah, I get that. And yet we get into a situation where we're talking to somebody and <laughs> all I see is what I see on the side of the beach ball. I don't get to see the, I, I can't open myself to that. And approaching it from a cognitive place of trying to think your way through it or figure where your way through it actually won't work. No. So the, the way that you, 
need to actually to, to develop that side of, okay, how can I hold space? How can I see the other perspective is dropping into your hearts because that is we're connected through our hearts. We can think about things. Our, our, our brain is actually a tool and using it as a tool rather than as a master is the best way for us to use our brain. So we're really, we're meant to have the heart as the CEO. And when we can come from that place, we are evolving ourselves. You mentioned earlier about us being, when we reach, like we graduated from high school or college, or maybe we've gotten our PhD, we think, okay, I've got, I've done it. My education's done. And yet we're meant to to be learning and evolving throughout the rest of our lives. And it's not cognitively. I mean, it is, don't get me wrong. <laughs> There's that. The source of it though, is more from our hearts. Mm -hmm. And when we're in our heart, it actually transcends the ego. And I say mm -hmm. the ego is like edging God out. And when I say God, I mean, your definition of God, whatever it might mean to you, whether it means love or beauty or harmony or spirit, whatever word you use, it's like truth. It, 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 like That's what we're edging out. We're edging out our ability to unite. And so when I look at that, when I get into, and, and the more education, and I'm, I'm talking book smart, sometimes the ego gets even stronger and stronger and stronger. Well, it mm -hmm. does. And then you have even more justification of being right. Instead of saying, you know, what if we leaned in? Like if someone has a different political view than you, or a different view of, of healthcare, or a different view of whatever it is, it's like, instead of saying, what the hell is the matter with you? If we said, that's a really, in you know what? That's a really interesting perspective. Tell me more of where you're coming from so I can understand your point of view. Mm -hmm. Then it gives an opportunity for growth to happen from one's heart because you just connected. Instead of being right or wrong, good or bad, you connected. It's like, and, and, and going back to that beach ball spinning and the child cannot see my point of view because it hasn't evolved enough yet. That tells you when someone is defensive or they're reactive in that any kind of way, they're often coming from an ego state of a child's mind in that area. They might be extremely evolved in others. And I find what happens when I deal with that kind of conflict is that when there's no space, they're just reactive. I'll say, you know, you might be right. And I'd like to look more about that. Can you, can you help me? It, it's going to take the leader in yourself to be very humbled. You're going to have to even annihilate your own ego in this. Because if we meet each other in fist fights <laughs> and force, there is going to be a win and a loss. It's like, what would it mean to actually transcend that? that I actually get to grow with it as well. I think this is phenomenal. When what I was trying to articulate, and I think you did a really nice job with this, is that when we meet each other on the intellectual level, it becomes a right-wrong game. It becomes my facts versus your facts. When we drop into our heart, you use the word connection. And that is where we connect because obviously my facts won't ever be the same as your facts because we haven't lived the same life. So mm. there's disconnection. There's an automatic, mine are not the same as yours, so we are separate. Whereas in our hearts, when we're in our hearts, and why our hearts need to be the CEOs is because that's where we actually connect, where we find the places where we can do things together and that your brain is different from my brain and let's celebrate that. Your facts are different from my facts and this is a good and beautiful thing mm -hmm. because now we can come together and we can collaborate together. And when our hearts are in charge, then the mind and all of those different things that we have become masters of and we have all of that, that great brain work that we've done becomes how that becomes the source of the co-creation. 
It becomes mm -hmm. the, oh gosh, yeah, we can do this together. And now we're no longer butting heads about my facts are better than your facts. And the beauty of it is, is when you put two opposites together, like when you have a disagreement or you have a conflict, that is what I call the divine irritant. If you think of like mm -hmm. the earth and you think of gemstones, it's like when pressure happens, it creates literally gem. Like that's how the diamond becomes polished. That's how the pearl becomes, you know, so beautiful in the oysters, the sand, the grit. It's an irritant. What, what happens is that we become addicted to drama mm -hmm. and our ego gets caught into it, which means it's totally invested in being right or making the other person wrong, or it's not, it's because it, it doesn't want to grow. It doesn't want to evolve. But if you can humble yourself and say, you know what, I'm coming up against an edge of uncomfortability. Hmm, what if I leaned in and just let go of my ego that I don't have to be right or wrong or good or bad. And I don't have to make somebody else that way either. I can be curious. I can stay humble and I can be open and actually be lifted up to a whole new state. This is what we call intimacy. And I've said this, I think in maybe a couple of the other podcasts into me, I see. We want intimacy. We say we do. And actually it's into me. I see that actually gives you full freedom. Because we'll say, but yeah, I don't want intimacy because it's going to, it's going to consume me and I'm going to be, I'm going to lose myself. Yeah, you will. Because that self is your identity and it's your ego. And it actually is going to be annihilated regardless. So you can either choose it through into me, I see, and being humble and being curious and staying open, or you can let the outside world literally create drama and pain to actually make it happen. That's our choice. That's called free will. So it takes a certain amount of self-love and willingness to do that, to actually go, you know what, maybe I don't know. And I'm sure I don't. And what if I could stay, like, even like talking to a child. I remember my mother with my nephew. God, he was like three years old. And dang, he was willful. He was going to have this. And next thing you know, she was like literally going to his state and saying, yeah, you will not have this. I am the grandmother. And right. And I'm laughing. I'm going, mom. You just like degraded yourself right down to a three-year-old. Like, really? And we see that, right? right. That's what happens. And, and, and you can't reason with a three-year-old. I'm not saying that you have to like go, oh, let me see your point of view, three-year-old. Because they don't, just like the beach ball experiment, they're not going to be able to see your point of view. They don't have the space yet. But it's like, we do that with adults. We, we, re we regress to our three-year-old self having a conversation with another, you know, Throwing a temper tantrum. Throwing a temper tantrum with each other. And it's like, yeah, I don't we want do. that either. Right. I don't want that either. So that's why I suggest that, which has been helpful for me lately. It's like, stay curious, stay in wonder, listen and ask somebody else's, their perspective that it might actually be way more beautiful and possible than what you would even imagine. You can open your mind, allow that to stay in your heart and also be open to say, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to annihilate my own ego here i they might be right about what they're saying and what they're even saying about myself and i'm going to go away and i'm going to look at that to me that's leadership yeah. i can't change them i can't fix them it's not mine to do it's none of my business but i can definitely work within myself that is mine to do and into me i see the more i'm willing to look within the more i'm allowing another person to look within me and the more I'd be willing to look within another. And to me, that's where we're going to evolve in this human, human race on this planet that so needs our love and our co-creation with her. I, uh, I have an exercise for everybody and it's based on my own quick reaction and then taking a moment to go, hmm, what, is that true? So earlier in the podcast, I mentioned the the fact that Stephanie had said to me, oh, that's just your star. And I said, no, it's not. And I got defensive around it. And that is me regressing and taking the time later, not making that good, bad, right, wrong, is just taking the time later to look at that and say, hmm, is it true? So this week, what I would encourage you to do is, is there a place where recently that you've reacted and had an instant, no, that's not true in your life and stop and take a look at it and really be willing to be honest with yourself of like, what if it were true? 
What if it were true? What if it were true that that was my star? What if it were true? And isn't it interesting that I immediately got defensive about that? So get, this is the curiosity that Stephanie was just talking about. I just wanted to give a very specific example of how, what you could do this week. One thing you could do this week to open that, that curiosity box and open your heart a little bit and maybe get to know yourself a little bit more, your gifts and your strengths and all the beauty that's in there. And, and to transport yourself in maybe the other person or the other system or the other, from that point of view, how they might see it. Just like the beach ball, you're yeah. seeing, you're seeing, you know, green and they're seeing red and what are both, what if both are true? Beautiful. Thanks so much for listening to us this week. We look forward to seeing you on our Facebook page or our LinkedIn page. You can find us at Soulful Leaders. And we now have a YouTube channel. So you can check us out there, see our little talking heads. And if none of those works for you, then we will see you next week on our Soulful Leader podcast right here on your favorite podcast channel. And that wraps up another episode of the Soulful Leader Podcast with your hosts, Stephanie Allen and Marin Oslak. Thank you for listening. If you'd like to dive deeper, head over to our website at thesoulfulleaderpodcast.com. Until next time.